The M1 MacBook Air and the M1 MacBook Pro brings the same chip and very similar specs, but why would you pick one over the other? Well, here are my five reasons to pick the M1 MacBook Pro over the air. Hello everyone, my name's Mike and here at Tech Car Moon, we uncover tech at home and in video. So hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more, but today I'm gonna to give you five reasons why you should go for the MacBook Pro over the air. And don't worry, I've done another video with five reasons why you should go for the air over this Pro, but let's get into this video. The first reason is performance. The M1 MacBook Pro does have the better performance, mainly under sustained loads. What this means is that when you are doing things like compiling code or exporting a video or compressing large files, which take longer than sort of 15 minutes, the M1 MacBook Air does throttle to keep its thermals down, but the M1 MacBook Pro can maintain its performance for extended periods because it has a fan. On the M1 one chip, the MacBook Air throttles down to about 85 to 90% of its performance, but the M1 MacBook Pro can hold its performance to 100%. And if you are looking to get the best performance out of your MacBook, then the M1 Pro is the best. And I will just say that in shorter tasks though, the performance is almost identical between the two, but under long workloads and heavy workloads, this is the one to go for. The next is a two-in-one, as it's the microphone and speaker in this thing. If you didn't check out my video on comparing the speakers and microphones between the two MacBooks, then definitely check that out. But from my test, the M1 MacBook Pro had the better speakers and better microphones. And just to let you know, here's a clip of that. Here we have the M1 MacBook Air, and this is the base model with uh, the seven core GPU and obviously eight core CPU, and this is what the microphone is like from the 720p camera with the new ISP, so the image signaling processor, and hopefully it's a bit of an improvement from the old Intel models. Here is the M1 MacBook Pro, and this is the base model, so it's got the eight core GPU and eight core CPU, and it's also got the studio microphone, so hopefully the audio quality sounds really good on this. And obviously we've got the 720p camera with the new image signaling processor so it means that the image even though it's stuck at the 720p resolution we should actually see much better dynamic range and white balance uh, settings as well so hopefully it looks a lot better than the other webcams that we've seen in previous MacBooks. <laughs> The brighter screen is another reason you should go for the Pro over the air. It is noticeable when working in bright offices and outside. I do miss the bright screen when I do take my MacBook Air outside, but personally I don't really have my screen at full brightness. And just to let you know, the MacBook Pro has 500 nits of brightness instead of 400 nits on the air. And if you are someone who works in bright areas, then the Pro is the better choice. Battery life on both models are fantastic. And even more surprising is that even under heavy loads, both MacBooks last for about six to eight hours with normal use easily. The Pro does beat it though, because you get about an extra hour to two hours of battery life on this. And charging this as well is faster, as I found that the MacBook Pro takes about an hour and a half or just under an hour and a half to charge it, whereas the MacBook Pro took around two hours. The last one is a little bit of a stretch, but the Pro model does have a larger trackpad and a touch bar, which is nice to use. Having the larger trackpad is nice to use for everyday tasks, but just to let you know, both trackpads feel identical. The touch bar is also nice to have as it does have some useful functionality and you've got to admit it does look cool. There are some certain tasks where I do use the touch bar all the time, but for me personally, I wouldn't say it was a huge deal breaker. Some of you may find this feature very useful depending on the application you use, but again, it's all subjective with that touch bar. I will be doing a few more videos on these MacBooks as I know there are a lot of questions that you guys have been asking me and I will be getting around to doing videos on all those questions. And just to let you know, I will also be giving you my thoughts and uh, my recommendations once I've sort of done my short-term review 
views on these M1 MacBooks and who I think should also wait for next year's models. But there we have it. As always, this is a discussion. So please leave a comment down below on what you think and check out the links in the description below to support the channel. If you haven't already, please follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Tech Moon. Drop me a like on this video if you've enjoyed it and hit that subscribe button if you want to see more. But if you want to see more from me right now, you know what to do. Click on one of these two videos. I know you'll love it and enjoy it. Anyway, until the next one, look after yourselves. Take care. Bye.